40 crazy rock music facts everyone should know. On Christmas Eve in 1969, Willie Nelson got a phone call that his house outside Nashville, Tennessee caught on fire. Willie came home, rushed into the fire, and managed to save his guitar trigger and one pound of weed. Brian Patrick Carroll, the guitarist known professionally as Buckethead, has recorded over 300 studio albums, four special releases, one EP, and has performed on more than 50 albums by other artists. As a child, Jimi Hendrix, being left-handed, would secretly restring his guitars to fit his left hand, but when his superstitious father was around, who believed it was bad luck to play with your left hand, he taught himself to play the normal guitar upside down. The heaviest heavy metal band known to exist, weighing in at one and a half tons, is a band called Compressor Head, an animatronic robot band created by Berlin-based artist Frank Barnes. The lead guitarist has a total of 78 fingers. In 1966, a relatively unknown young American musician asked to get on stage with Cream and the Guitar God, Eric Clapton. He played the song Killing Floor, which Clapton had always said was too difficult to play live. That man was Jimi Hendrix, and that became known as the day Hendrix killed God. Folk musician Donovan taught John Lennon a finger-picking guitar style in 1968 that Lennon later employed in Dear Prudence, Julia, and Happiness is a Warm Gun. Paul McCartney said he was also an influence when writing Blackbird. American guitarist Les Paul, who inspired the Gibson Les Paul, shattered his right arm and elbow in a near-fatal automobile accident in 1948 when his car plunged off the side of a railroad overpass and dropped 20 feet into a ravine. Doctors couldn't rebuild his elbow elbow and considered amputation, but Paul had them fuse his arm at a 90-degree angle, enabling him to cradle and play the guitar. Mike McCready of Pearl Jam crafted his guitar solo for Alive by drawing inspiration from Ace Frehley's solo on Kisses, She. Interestingly, Frehley himself had based that solo on Robbie Krieger's work on The Doors' song, Five to One. When guitar player Steve Vai joined Frank Zappa's band as a teenager, he was so good even then that Zappa would credit his guitar parts as stunt guitar or impossible guitar parts on the liner notes of his albums. The iconic riff to Rage Against the Machine's Killing in the Name was conceived while guitarist Tom Morello was giving a student a guitar lesson. He immediately stopped the session to record the riff. The song American Woman was made by accident. While playing at a show in Ontario, Randy Bachman broke a guitar string. While tuning his guitar, he came up with a great riff. He implored Burton Cummings to sing something, and the first words out of his mouth were, American woman, stay away from me. The Gibson guitar that Peter Frampton played on his 1976 album, Frampton Comes Alive, was lost for 32 years after the guitar was put on a cargo plane that crashed. The guitar ended up being owned by a musician on a Caribbean island, before before a collector spotted it and contacted Frampton in 2012. The intro to Black Sabbath's Iron Man was achieved by having Ozzy Osbourne sing through a spinning fan. When the Guitar Hero team wanted to record a cover of the song, they bought the same model of fan through Craigslist to duplicate the effect. The piano intro in Leonard Skinner's Free Bird was composed by their roadie, Billy Powell. When he played it for them, he was promoted to band member on the spot. Eddie Van Halen recorded the 1995 piece Strung Out back in 1984 on a piano filled with things like ping pong balls, batteries, knives, and forks. The producer picked out 90 seconds of a 10-hour tape recording. In the last four years of Elvis Presley's life, he had been prescribed 19,000 doses of drugs. In 1977 alone, the year of his death, Dr. Nicopolis had written 199 prescriptions totaling more than 10,000 doses of sedatives, amphetamines, and narcotics to Elvis. The cover photo for the Foo Fighters single Stacked Actors is actually just a photo of a breast implant because the song is about everything that is fake and everything that is plastic. David Lee Roth wrote the lyrics to Van Halen's song, Jump, after watching the news and seeing a man on top of the Arco Tower in LA threatening to commit suicide. Roth thought that there's always at least one person in the crowd telling the guy to go ahead and jump. The band Credence Clearwater Revival were all from the San Francisco Bay Area and had never even visited Louisiana or the Bayou. Their accents were simply exaggerated for effect. In the mid-1970s, Iggy Pop once tried sticking his tongue on an electric train transformer and smoking spider webs to get high when he couldn't get his hands on any real drugs. Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees was the owner of the third Moog synthesizer ever commercially available and used it to perform Daily Nightly in the first use of a synthesizer in a rock recording. 
Jerry Garcia bought the film rights to Kurt Vonnegut's Sirens of Titan, specifically to prevent Hollywood from making a hack version of it and held onto those rights until his death in 1995. Lemmy from Motorhead is claimed to have slept with over 2,000 women and once made it to number eight on Maxim's Living Sex Legends list. In 1972, Deep Purple reached 117 decibels at one of their concerts, which rendered three audience members unconscious and earned them a spot in the Guinness World Record book, which was topped by The Who by nine decibels in 1976. Cindy Lauper's hit She Bop is about female masturbation. It was on the Parent Music Resource Center's Filthy 15 list, which eventually led to the creation of the Parental Advisory sticker. The organizers of the 1985 song We Are the World didn't invite Madonna to participate on the recording because they didn't think she could sing. In 1978, Alice Cooper donated $27,000 to help restore the famous Hollywood sign. He sponsored an O in memory of his friend, Groucho Marx. The title of Led Zeppelin's song, Black Dog, which reached the charts in several countries, was inspired by a black Labrador retriever without a name that lingered and wandered around the Headley Grange recording studios when the band were recording Led Zeppelin IV. The first time the term heavy metal was used was in Steppenwolf's song Born to be Wild and therefore is thought to be the first ever official heavy metal song. When Buddy Holly was killed in a plane crash, his pregnant wife heard the news on television and suffered a miscarriage as a result. Since then, it became policy to notify family of tragedy before names became public. The music for Don Henley's classic 1984 song The Boys of Summer was written by Mike Campbell, the guitarist for Tom Petty. Petty didn't want to use it, so Campbell played it for Henley, who loved it and wrote the lyrics. It became a number one hit. In 1971, Roger Daltrey of The Who convinced his bank to lend him 39,500 pounds for a house by having them believe that, as a major star, he was a millionaire. However, due to reckless tour spending, The Who actually were 600,000 pounds in debt at the time. The band Iron Butterfly didn't know they were being recorded in the studio for 17 minutes when they played their now hit song, Inagata da Vida. It went on to sell 30 million records. My Chemical Romance was formed after lead singer Gerard Way witnessed the 9-11 attacks, inspiring their first song, Skylines and Turnstiles. Way, who was working as an intern at Cartoon Network and aspiring to be a comic book artist, shifted to music after the event changed his perspective. Victor Willis, the lead singer of the disco group Village People, was actually straight and he was married to Felicia Rashad, the American actress better known as Claire Huxtable from The Cosby Show. In 1991, singer Reba McIntyre's band left San Diego in two private planes, with McIntyre, her husband and her stylist, intending to follow in a separate aircraft the next day. One of the planes crashed, killing eight members of McIntyre's band. Toto guitarist and vocalist Steve Lukather has played on over 800 albums and with many artists including Michael Jackson, The Bee Gees, Ringo Starr and his all-star band, and Miles Davis. 